You may remain standing with me if you will. You just sat down, but this is a Pentecostal church and we get up and down a lot. If you're a guest here, we are so glad you're here today. Welcome into the house of God. Thank you for being with us at Living Way. You have just stepped into a place that is life-giving, hope-giving, truth-giving, grace-giving, and I'm glad to be a part. I'm glad to be in the house today. I'm glad to be among family in the presence of God today, thankful for what he is doing and what he is going to do in the house this morning. He's already begun to do some great things all in these altars. People are receiving victory all throughout the worship service. Chains are falling all throughout the worship service. No matter where you're at, you can be in the back and chains can fall. Amen. I'm excited about the presence of the Lord ministering into your life this morning. I am also very excited about our small group fair that's happening right after service. You got to get over there. And uh, it's set up so wonderfully, and it's just ready for you, and it's going to be a wonderful next 12 weeks. Our life groups begin this week. Your life group, whoever you sign up with to be uh, in that life group, they'll be starting to communicate with you uh, ASAP and give you all the details that you need to know. Uh, so you just can be easy this, uh, this morning. You can just walk over there. Find your life group. Life group leaders are going to be over there. You've got questions. They're going to talk to you about their life group. And uh, as again, I would say probably uh, be a part of no more than two life groups. Uh, that way you can stay just connected. But uh, if you want to just be a part of one, that's great as well. But just get over there and find something that interests you. And we've got... Man, we've got a ton of life group leaders that have stepped out, and it's going to be a blast. I'm going to just, I, I want us just to pray right now. I want us just to pray. As a body, as a church, we're stepping into this together. This is not an individual deal. This is not uh, over 50 life group leaders deal. Uh, this is a family effort. This is a body effort. And I want us to pray that God would bless our life groups, bless our life group leaders and that there would be freedom, and there would be community, and there would be relationships. How many of you, may I ask, can remember and know somebody in your life that was critical in your either being here today if you're brand new, or in your growth spiritually? How many of you can point to somebody and say, that person was key in me living for God and in and my discipleship and my growth. Can you do that? Just raise your hand. Somebody in your life was key. That's relationships right there. That's connections right there. That speaks of people being connected to one another. And that's exactly what this is all about and being connected. And I'm just asking God's blessings and anointing on our groups that he would bless, that there would be just amazing things happening in pockets of groups all over this city all throughout the next 12 weeks that people will find deliverance freedom strength hope peace breakthrough anointing anointing and calling and purpose on their lives that testimonies would be born out of this that would shake and rattle the devil's cage I'm going to tell y'all something right now. Y'all listen to me. Y'all listen to me. What we're about to do is not only biblical, but I believe it's anointed. And I can tell you straight up, anytime you move forward into an anointing, the enemy is going to do everything he possibly can to stick his foot out and trip somebody up. But you know what? Bring it on. Because we're not looking back. And we're not stopping. God has us in this place for a purpose. And we're moving straight ahead into the presence of God and changing lives for his glory. Amen. So I want you to lift your hearts right now. And I want you to pray, God, 
Anoint our groups, Lord. Anoint our leaders, Jesus. Minister to them right now. I pray, God, as we endeavor into this right now, that this would be a mission anointed by you and strengthened by you and encouraged by you, Lord. Anoint our facilitators. Anoint those that are being a part of a group. Pray that you would lead them to the right group this day, God, as they walk over to the fair this morning, that, God, you would lead them to the right group, God, that relationships would be born, that Tyler said, would last a lifetime, Jesus. Minister in Jesus' name. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Exodus chapter 6, Exodus chapter 6, I want to say while you're looking up that scripture, we have a special treat for you tonight and you do not want to miss tonight church at 6 p.m. You want to be here, it's going to be exciting, it's going to be fun and uh, you don't want to miss tonight at 6 p.m. Exodus chapter 6. It says, therefore, say to the children of Israel, I am the Lord. We've been reading this scripture for now on the fourth week. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. The next promise, I will rescue you from their bondage and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. Come on, somebody know he's got two arms reaching. And number four, I will take you as my people. Would you just say that out loud with me? My people. Oh, I got to get you to help me a little bit more today. Say my people. Uh -huh. And I will be your God. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, your God, who brings you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And today I'm going to preach to you for just a few minutes on this subject, making a difference. Make a difference. Amen. Somebody clap your hands to the Lord one more time. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. <coughs> we have organized our church around these four promises of God out of Exodus chapter 6. In the sense, with these four things, know God. Number two, find freedom. Number three, discover your purpose. Fit in that glove. And number four, making a difference. God's ultimate plan for you is to live life to the fullest. He told us, I will give you life and that more abundantly. And you do that, and you experience that life, and everybody in this house this morning wants a taste of that life. You do that by experiencing and stepping into all four of these promises. John 10 and 10 says the thief's purpose is to steal, to kill and destroy my purpose is to give life and all of its fullness so many people today and maybe you're in this room today and you find yourself struggling to get some traction and do what it is and live in that place where you know you are functioning for what you were born to function in and do what you were born to do. You may be facing that struggle. It may be because that you are allowing your past somewhere, somewhere to cripple you and trip you up. That maybe your past is so loud in your ear. That your future cannot get a word in edgewise. That your purpose can't get a word in edgewise because your past is ringing too loud in your ears. When you leave here today, 
Try driving home in your vehicle just looking in the rearview mirror. Actually, don't do that. Right? We have 50 wrecks today, and they blame it on, well, we have this new preacher. And he had told us to drive home. And uh, so now don't do that. But you're not going to do well driving home looking in the rearview mirror. You got a front windshield right there. And you got to look ahead. I see in the rearview mirror some things, but I'm just looking back there just to thank God that that's not where I'm at anymore. I thank God that I am moving forward. I thank God, like Paul, this one thing I do, and that is I put the things behind me, behind me. My past is just that. It's in the past. And I'm getting past my past so that I can live in the future and I can allow the purpose of what God is communicating into my life to begin to speak into my future. The times that I try to drive my life forward, looking back, I end up in an emotional crash every single time. Can somebody say, man, you know what I'm talking about? You just can't avoid crashes if you're trying to move forward looking back. David had some problems like that. We all do. We all have looked back way too many times. And David spent some days in his life held back by his yesterdays. In Psalms 38, it says this, and listen to the sorrow in his spirit. My guilt, he said, overwhelms me. It is a burden too heavy to bear. My wounds fester and stink because my foolish sins. I am bent over and racked with pain. All day long, I walk around filled with grief. The reason that his mind and spirit is so turned inside out is because he is living in too much of yesterday. And the word that throws us that idea is he says, my guilt overwhelms me. When we allow Jesus to settle our past, then we can move into our future. Not only do we allow our past to hinder us, you and I get off track when we start chasing diversions and things that have nothing to do with our purpose and what God made us for. If I'm chasing this and I'm chasing that and I'm not chasing what he called me to do, then it hinders me from living in that life to its fullest. This is why we are beginning a class called Start Living Class on March the 1st. And we'll talk to you more about it in the future here in the next few weeks. But We want people to awaken to what God has created them to do. We want them to not only be born again, but in this born again process, we want to help them find their meaning in life and discover their purpose in life. And we're going to come alongside of you and we're going to help you discover what it is and how can I fit into that glove. There's a playbook. You got the enemy's playbook. And you've got God's playbook. And it's time to close the chapters on the enemy's playbook. Because his playbook is everything that builds around guilt, condemnation, pride, arrogance, bitterness. All the things that distract us. Even the good things of life. I've never been better pastor in my job. And I celebrate that with you. But that can't serve as a diversion from what God has called me to do. We're not going to achieve that purpose all by ourselves. There's no way that we can ever live 
and God's design for us just by ourselves. And it's weird because in a, in a society where there is so much emphasis put on social things, social media, that people have gotten accustomed more to socializing while being isolated. That they're socializing and getting their social fix while living in some sort of seclusion. And really and truly, in the middle of all that, there's things that are being born. I, I enjoy social media, but I'm going to just tell you, in a lot of ways, it is crippling the God-designed community that he has created us to live in. And there's no other way to battle that than to sometimes just put your phone down and engage in what God wants you to do in fellowship face to face with other people. And so there are people that are isolated and secluded in their own world and their justification is is that they are posting things and people are talking back and texting a few words to them and liking that. But somewhere or another, there's still a void in their spirits because it doesn't matter how many likes you get, there's still a void. And the void is, is because he said specifically, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. We have to be together. We have to join together. And you cannot accomplish what God wants you to accomplish alone. There is no such thing as, as long as I live for God, I don't need other people. Living for God can't even be accomplished without including others. I may be hurting your feelings today and I may be stepping on your toes today because you have gotten used to feeling like it's okay where you're at because you and God have something going on. But what you fail to realize is that when he was asked, what are the, what is the greatest commandment? He said, yes, Love God, but he also said, love people. So until there is a vertical as well as a horizontal relationship, it is virtually impossible for me to enjoy, to enjoy the fullness of life because God's plan incorporates not only him, but it incorporates That's his way. There's no getting around it. Listen to how God describes his church. He uses terms like we're the family of God. We're part of a fellowship of believers. We're the body of Christ with many parts. We're part of the flock of God. Because God designed his plan For you to be fulfilled with the help and the assistance of others. And people all all the time are, are using within themselves the justification that they have not stopped loving God. I haven't stopped loving God, Pastor. I I just don't want other people in my life. They get on my nerves. It's not my personality. I've been hurt too many times. And I'm just going to stay here and have a relationship with God. And I may even come to church, but I'm going to come to church and I'm going to leave. I'm not going to talk to anybody because I love God, but I hate his people. So I'm in and out. That justification don't settle with God. And maybe... The enemy has been able to use some kind of past hurt to get you to lean on that 
to justify your isolation. And I'm not undermining your hurt. I'm not undermining what's happened to you, not in the least bit. But he would get you to ride that horse until it's dead. And it might just be a dead horse. And it's time to bury it. Maybe he's using your personality type. I'm not an, I'm not an outgoing type at all. And I just want to, you know what? There's all kinds of different personalities and some people just don't like crowds, but it still don't change the fact that he said, love God, love people. Ecclesiastes four and eight says this. There was a man all alone. He had neither son nor brother. There was no end to his toil, yet his eyes were not content with his wealth. There's no end to his toil, but the preceding truth was he didn't have anybody in his life. And the devil uses isolation probably as one of his greatest tools to create frustration and confusion and stir up stuff in our spirits that cause things and cause unrest in our lives. This is why God brings us to his fourth promise. I will take you as my people and I will be your God. A few years ago, I was invited to attend what is called a Jewish Seder. And it was an experience like I'd never had before. And it all surrounded by an old biblical principle that they reenact through using food and all kinds of different things and songs. But in this Jewish Seder, there was considered the cup of praise. The Jewish people call this last cup the Hallel. Hallel means to celebrate. It means praise. It means the cup of celebration. It's, you could call it the hallelujah cup. We think of hallelujah as a worship moment in church. And you know what? It certainly is. But this cup represents more than just a praise moment in a service. God wants us to literally live a life of Hallel. He wants us to live a life of praise, a life of worship. And it is impossible to live a life of praise. And it is impossible to live a life of celebration if you're not living in a meaningful life. And that meaningful life is not a problem-free life. That meaningful life is not, or is an abundant life rather, because I have other people involved in it. It's because I have found my purpose. Meaning in my life is because I have not only found my God, but I have found my purpose. I have discovered Jesus and I have discovered my calling. And when you get those two things working, then something is going to erupt inside of you and you're going to drink from the cup of Hallel, the cup of celebration, uh, and you're going to know what it means uh, when he says, I have come to give you life uh, and that more abundantly when you know me and you know why you are you. Come on, I'm talking to somebody right now. When you know me, Somebody needs to know Jesus today. Maybe that's where you're at. And I'm going to tell you, there's nothing like knowing Jesus. But there's also nothing like beginning to let Jesus uh, fill you in on who you are. And why he created you. And what your purpose is. Uh, and when you fit in that glove, something erupts inside of you that you declare, man, it feels good to live in my hallelujah. This is my hallelujah. Man, 
Amen. If I could write songs, I think I'd write a song. This is my hallelujah. Living in what God has created you to do. It's not a problem-free life. doesn't mean everything is wrinkle-free and everything is going to go just right all the time. That's not all it is. But it is me knowing that I am doing and accomplishing what God has called me to do. Many of your frustrations today is because you have not only either lost a relationship with God, but you have forgotten your why. You have lost your why. Why am I here? What am I supposed to do? Am I living in more regrets than I am hope? Am I living in more frustration because I feel like I'm just surviving? And you began living when you become a difference maker. Thank God for the difference makers in our church. Thank God for the army of difference makers in our church. Every single facet of this church. uh, This church isn't established uh, because of one man. This church isn't here because of one person. This church is here because there's an army of people that have fallen in love with God. That he's brought them out uh, and they begin to know God and God helps them to know them. And then they get on board uh, and they work and they live in their hallelujah. A hallelujah on their job. A hallelujah when they go home to their family. Uh, They have discovered this is why I exist. Uh, This is why I am where I am and doing what I do. Because I am his kid. Making a difference for his kingdom. Somebody clap your hands. Watch what he says, how God worded this fourth and final promise. He said, I will take you as my own people. He did not say that he would ever make you a fulfilled person. That was not the promise. I'll make you a fulfilled person. He promised that he would make you a fulfilled people. Meaning that it's not just making a difference by myself. Meaning that it's becoming a part of a church family. It's becoming a part of a body. And all of its struggles uh, and all of its inadequacies uh, and all of its pains uh, and all of its growing pains. uh, It is becoming a part of a body and a family. Uh, This isn't a perfect church. Uh, You didn't elect a perfect pastor. uh, But I can tell you one thing. uh, You've got a perfect God uh, and it is his perfect will that you are a part of his church. Because this church is the only thing that is predestined to win. So the boat might have a few cracks in it. uh, And the boat might have a few uh, dents in it. uh, And the paint may be scraping off a little bit here and there. But I can tell you one thing. That boat is going to make it to the very end. uh, And I can tell you I'm going to be on this boat. Through all the waves. Through all the storms. uh, Through all the struggles. uh, Through whatever wind blows. uh, I'm a part of the body of Christ. I'm a part of his church. I don't want to be a part of anything else. I'm not interested in being a part of a country club. That can't take me nowhere. I want to be a part of the church. Because you can know this one thing. This church isn't going down. I'm not talking about this. I'm not talking about living way. Although indirectly I am. This church as a whole isn't going down. It's predestined to win. It's bought with a price. It's already got its victory papers. Uh, The trophy's already been handed out. I already know the end. Uh, The end is this church will win. Uh, And so I'm going to stay involved in the community of believers uh, through whatever I have to stay in. Because it's the only thing that's traveling to the other side. Thank God for his church. Thank God for his body. Thank God for the church. I will make you a fulfilled 
people. And it's when you're connected to something bigger than yourself. The body of Christ. Ultimate life comes from being part of a team. A part of a tribe. And this isn't just any tribe. This is a God called out tribe. Yeah. This is a God called out tribe. The next thing that God says is, I will be your God. I will make you a people. I do a force of interconnected people. Here's the church. Here's the steeple. Open the doors. And there's all the people. And we're interconnected. And we're interwoven. And we're together. And we're moving forward. But I love the next part. I will be your God. Your identity will be attached to me and the church, the body of Christ. My identity is not come to Brent Keating's church. This isn't Brent Keating's church because Brent Keating didn't shed his blood for it. He did. So why don't you come to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ? And this church is interconnected and our identity is woven into who he is. I will always be the head. He says, I will always be the head of this body. My spirit is leading and it's guiding. And he is the brains behind this operation. And for us to come in and begin to put some words to this. Know God, find freedom, discover purpose and make a difference. That's just words that are associated with God saying, uh, listen, uh, I'm going to bring you out. I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to redeem you. And I'm going to work through you as a people. And I will be your God. Uh, This is not anybody's church but his. uh, And this is his plan. uh, That we reach out uh, and we help save the world. uh, That we help bring people in uh, and get people out of Egypt. uh, And once they're out of Egypt, uh, allow God begin to get Egypt out of them. And then move them into a place where they're so interwoven, connected to the body, that they begin to make a difference. And God recycles and redeems all of the struggle in their lives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You didn't go through what you went through just on accident. Here's the deal. God's going to take all your struggle and all your pain uh, and all your abuse uh, and all your misfortune uh, and whatever else. uh, He's going to take all that and he's going to work it with his grace. uh, And then he's going to give it back to the world. uh, And he's going to say, try this on for size. Uh, I'm using uh, what used to be trash. Uh, I'm using it for my glory. I love the word redemption, don't you? I love the word redemption. That means nothing I went through is wasted. He's going to use it all for his kingdom and his glory. joy that we long for, that joy that we want comes when you are making life investments. I'm talking life investments through the church, through the body of Christ and into eternity. Into eternity. Lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust corrupt. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. So when you drive into this parking lot and you see somebody out there with a parking team shirt on. Let me tell you what they're doing. They're laying up themselves treasures 
in heaven. Uh, let me tell you what somebody's doing that's teaching Sunday school over there right now and giving their best to those kids uh, while you're in here uh, receiving God's word to your life. Uh, those people are allowing God uh, to lay up through them uh, the treasures uh, through the church uh, and an investment in eternity. Uh, I don't care if it's our media team, uh, our usher team. Uh, I don't care if it's our hospitality team. Uh, I don't care if it's people helping the homeless uh, or whatever it is, uh, whatever arm of this church uh, is moving. Uh, we're moving in sync with one another and we're all a part of the body uh, so that we can make an investment through the church into eternity. And when you take a step, when you don't just look at the elevator, when you don't just admire the elevator, when you don't just believe in the elevator, but when you take a step into the elevator, it's already pre-positioned. When you take a step in and declare where you want to go, everything else, you don't see all of them. You don't see all of the inner workings. You just get on and you step in and you declare. Floor number four. The rest of it, he's got it taken care of. It's arranged. The power has already been. You don't, you don't necessarily see all that. You just feel something bigger than you is taking you somewhere. That's why I said for a few minutes ago, because it's so easy to come to church and to just go through the motions of church and never spend any time engaging and stepping on the elevator. And you step on the elevator and declare, I'm a worshiper, so I'm going to whether lift my hands, close my eyes, get out and come up front. I don't know what it is, but I am going to declare with my mouth because he said, let everything that hath breath. That wasn't a suggestion. Uh, that wasn't just something uh, that he was throwing out there so a preacher could make a good preaching point. It was a declaration. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. So I dare you, open your mouth and declare. I love you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. I exalt you, Lord. Something's going to happen that you already don't see, and it's taking you somewhere. <laughs> Woo! My goodness, have mercy. I said, my goodness, have mercy. I believe there's an elevator. I know there's an elevator that's in this place. And God's wanting somebody to step out of a little bit of a comfort zone this morning. That's what I'm saying. Hey, I'm right there with you. Because when you get in that elevator, it's going to be a hey. Where are we going? Hey, something's happening here. Hey, I'm going somewhere. Huh? He already put it in place. He's taking you somewhere, but you got to step on. Why don't you open your mouth and begin to declare, I want to be a worshiper. I am so running out of time, but I am so in a vein right now, and I just want to work on it right now. I've done hopped on a live horse, and it's taken me somewhere. <laughs> Come on, because something's happening inside of you. If you would just open your mouth. Come on, that's the word for some of you right now. You need to open your mouth. You need to form some words of praise. Uh, I don't care what your circumstances are. I don't care how blue and how dark. Uh, God's already got something for you. But he's waiting on you to step into it.
Come on, it could be a breakthrough right now. It could be deliverance right now. It could be a purpose right now. It could be you fulfilling your dream right now. But God is wanting you to step into it right now. I wonder what it would look like. I'm talking to the shy people. I'm talking to the people going through struggles right now. I'm talking to the people weighed down with so much stuff and guilt and depression and anxiety. I'm talking to you right now. I'm talking to the people that have run out of money and you got more bills than you do money. I'm talking to the people that have more pain, uh, that have more frustration, uh, that have more sickness uh, than they do healing. Uh, I'm talking to you right now because, listen to me, there is a blessing prepared, pre-prepared, pre-arranged in this moment. But you got to step into it. You got to step into it. You got to step into it. Your purpose, you got to step into it. Into this moment right now. I am going to declare to some of you that what you've been waiting for has really been waiting on you. I gotta say that again. What you've been waiting for has really been waiting on you. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. You've gotten yourself in a little bit of a rut. You've gotten yourself where you talk more about your struggle than you talk about your hope. You talk more about your pain than you talk about him as a healer. You talk more about your problems than him as a solution problem solver. And in this house right now, there's something waiting on some of you. And here's what I'm going to say. You may be shy. You may be down. I don't know what you could possibly use right now. It's a plethora of things that you could pull in and hold it close as a moment to justify. But I'm speaking to somebody right now. And here's my, here's my ask of you. If you will, you've been waiting on something. And I may not be talking to everybody. I may be talking. I don't know. But you know. But if there's something that you've been waiting on. Whether you're brand new here this morning, I want you to stand to your feet and I want you to walk to this front. You've been waiting through a breakthrough emotionally, mentally, financially, relationally, your purpose. You just heard from the Lord. Somebody needs to take a step. That's all right. That's it. God have mercy. Come on. Take a step. Press in a little bit. Press in a little bit, if you will. Press in a little bit. Come on. We got more room in the altar. Press in a little bit. Come up here and throw your hands up. Come up here and begin to activate your voice. Come up here and begin to let breath 
in your body flow through your body right now. I'm going to let the breath of God. I'm going to let the breath of God. I'm going to bring praise to him right now. I'm going to bring praise to him right now. He's about to take you somewhere. Come on, he's taking you somewhere right now. He's taking you somewhere right now into a place of healing, into a place of breakthrough, uh, into a place. Come on, that's it. That's it. Stay in that place for a moment. Stay there for a moment. Stay there. Stay there. There's healing happening in this place. There's healing happening in this place right now. There's healing. Take a step. Walk across that plank and get on board. This ship is going somewhere. This ship is going somewhere. I worship you right now. I worship you right now. That's it. I love you right now. I love you right now. I I live to worship. I love you. 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 Just play. Just play. Just play. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, I want you to hear the sound of worship. I don't want you just to hear a song right now. I want you to hear the sound of worship. I want the sound of worship. Come on, I'm going up. This elevator's taking me somewhere. I am in a place of ascension. I have stepped forward. I have stepped home. My God, have mercy. In Jesus' name, cover this place. Cover this place. Cover this place. It's happening right now. It's happening right now. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. 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 I breathe worship. I breathe praise. I breathe worship and praise right now. I breathe worship and praise right now. Come on, speak it out. Unlock the door. Unlock the door of your soul right now. Unlock the door of your spirit. Unlock the door of your spirit with a praise. Yeah. Thank you for 